<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hi. This is Eddie Marcus again. I'm here again because I need to be. Look, the impeachment uh, process is taking place today, and you got these questions that are coming from the senators, uh, and they're asking uh, the uh, House, and they're asking the President's Council, you know, questions, trying to make their points. And it's kind of funny to me. I'm sitting here thinking about all of the world know what's going on. They're playing a game in Washington before the people of this nation and before the people of the world. What everybody already knows, the outcome, they've already telegraphed that. That we'll go through this process for a minute and then we're going to let the president off the hook and which that means, especially to this particular guy, that means that America has now become a dictatorship. Say what you want to say. <laughs> that means that America has now become a dictatorship. Now, how do you fight that? I say to you, think of it like this. For me, the nation has been low. All nations are low. They are founded on being low. But some of them are lower than others. And in time, they all get a chance to be its lowest. So it's nobody better than another. You just wait till your time comes. At least that's what history says to us. And right now, we are going through a point in our time, perhaps we've been lower, but I know in my lifetime, I've never seen it so low as I do today. And maybe it's because I know that it doesn't have to be this low. I mean, it is truly a representation of choice. Now, I realize that most of you do not know what the choice is. You have been programmed to accept the fact that this is the best government on the face of the earth. And when you're going through changes, as you're going through now, all you got to do is hang on to your political persuasion, Republican or Democrat. You're going to fight, fight, fight to get in, and they're going to do something for you. Might not do anything for the other side that much, but don't worry about it. They're going to take care of us. Or on the other side, the Republicans said, we're going to look after the Republicans, we're not worried about it. You see how crazy you guys are. Now think about it. Think about a family. A mother and a father, got a girl and a boy, a boy and a girl. And they got uh, some aunts who got a girl and a boy, girl and a boy, and they're cousins, right? And everybody's concerned and care about the mother and their father, their sons and daughters, and aunts and uncles and first and second cousins, you know what I mean? By the time you get to that third cousin, things start getting a little thin. You don't know really who they are that well. For some strange reason, you're not that close. And especially if you're on the father's side. I don't know what, something about that. Or maybe sometime on the mother's side. It's just something that somebody's getting on a little bit more than others. And so you have this breakdown and then you have these other cousins, second cousins, third cousins who have expanded on out and taken your family tree further on out there. But you know nothing about them, but they're out there. My point, ladies and gentlemen, is this. According to what we be, have been taught by humankind, we have been taught based upon stuff that we can try to identify. You know what they say about scientific, they say stuff you can put your hands on, and anything else is just speculation. Well, anyway, speculation, if you may, if you may. But the human race, not according to the founding fathers, whether it is of this country or of any country, but according to facts, <laughs> The creator of humankind makes us all family. There's no separation for it. You know, you got the president, now the third cousins, 
two steps back from it and so on and so forth. <laughs> you just fix it up any kind of way you want them. But the bottom line is that which makes us human, that which makes us alive comes from the same source and it is in the makeup of each and every last one of us. Sometimes people call it the blood, some people call it the spirit, whatever you want to call it. It is which ties us together as family. Now, we have got to learn something real quick. How do we take the same love we got for the mother and the father and the sisters and the brothers in that same household? How do we take it all across the nation? Well, based upon the way the system is designed in every country, in every country, is designed to prevent that from happening. In most systems on this in the West, and I'm sure everywhere else, are designed to promote uh, haves and have-nots. The haves ride on the back of the have-nots. <laughs> you, can't, you can't look at it in any other kind of way. The richer the haves are, the poor the have-nots are. And the more they are. <laughs> Can you dig it? Now, but this universal power that I talked to you about, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm here to tell you about, what I call God, designed it in such a way that you, every American, that you, every human being on the face of the earth, <laughs> This God, this Heavenly Father, is fantastic. It was designed in such a way that every American and every human being on the face of the earth could live as though they are experiencing heaven on earth. Everything that is necessary for that to happen has already been given. But in order for that to go beyond where it's at right now. It means that we the people, it means that every American, it means that every human being on earth must make that choice. They must make the choice that they want their dreams to come true. Even if it means that every human being in America and every human being on the face of the earth must have that dream come true too. <laughs> hey baby, ain't that something? You're willing to have your dream come true at the expense of allowing everybody else to have that dream come true? Now you know that's something unique. That's something different. You are willing to have your dreams come true even at the expense of allowing and making sure that everyone else dream come true as well. Now that comes from that invisible spirit. That's something that you don't get from over here because they tell you over here only the strong survive. You got to compete <laughs> and make the best man win. And you in that process, you know the story of the lion, the cheating, the war. I don't want to go there today. But I want you to know that while they are talking about who is making a better argument, the president's for saying the policy and the procedure was wrong, or the reality what the Democrats bring. Now, if the Democrats, if they can get some witnesses and they just make the man show it all across everywhere, I mean, in such clarity that the Duke is guilty, and they just let him off, he still got to walk tiptoe. He can't, he, he can't call himself a dictator because they watch it is. They watch it as every inch. But if they don't go that route, then he just figure all he got to do is bribe the nation, tell them he's going to give them a tax break if they just vote for Republicans. So he can have a presidency, the whole Congress, and, and put everybody else in jail if he don't like them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you are dealing with. 
This is what you're dealing with in reality. This is what you're dealing with. I stand before you to tell you that there is another way. You don't have to be caught up in this stuff any longer. There really is a God. And I'm not talking about some belief stuff. I'm talking about there really is a God. Now, I know many times you said the earth and all the trees and the plants and the flowers and the rivers. I know you said that got to be a God, even you human beings. I know you have said that. But when the belief about how you're supposed to live here on this earth, that's where the big mis uh, misunderstanding is. How do you live here on this earth? You got some people saying do this. You got some people saying do this. You got everything being done and everywhere where people want. And that ain't happening. Because <laughs> there's some and some not. So the whole point is how you get there. And I'm telling to tell you, I just summed it up again. It's by that spirit that lives in you that says that you want that heavenly this so much you're willing to allow everybody else that same to have heaven for them. And that's how you do it. Because if that's what you mean, then that is what you will strive to get. And you will find out that there are things that are, oh boy, I really didn't want to go here, but just let me see if I can say it real quick. You will find out that there are things that are coming amongst every last one of us. And having those coming things, coming needs, desires, and wants met are the things that helps take us to the place where our dreams can be fulfilled. And the way it was designed for that to happen is by each of us engaging our talents in the process of creating what all of those requirements are creating all of those productions, all of those resources, and to put them in the reservoir of goods and services, creating it all so everyone would have such an, an abundance made available to them so no one would have to suffer lack of anything. Now that's, hey, that's the first step of heaven. That's the first step. And then beyond that, is where your imagination takes you. But the foundation has been set. Now, I think I'll go. I want to leave there with you. This is my message for today. Is don't give up. God, the invisible God, the spirit God that lives in you, that is made alive by your own hands, in your own mouth, in your own action. It's what makes this world better. Goodbye.